All right, listen up. You clicked on this video because you're looking for excellence. I'm about to drop some real knowledge on you about math Olympiads. So let's dive into a beast of a problem. Find the greatest common divisor of n to the 17 minus n for all integers n. I'll drop some hints soon. But first, take a moment, try to crack it on your own. Okay, then let's start simple. What are the obvious divisors of n to the 17 minus n? Two, maybe, but we're not here to play it safe. We're here to dominate this problem. There are so many random Olympiads garbage out there, but what I am showing you today is the real deal. Remember Fermat, the one who claimed to have proved his theorem but didn't write it down because he ran out of space? Don't try to do that in your next exam. But here we do real proofs, no excuses, only solid logic and mathematical strategy. Fermat's little theorem tells us that for any positive integer, a and a prime number p, a raised to the power of p is congruent to a modulo p. That's gold when you're tackling Olympiad problems. Start small, see where it leads. Inspiration often comes from the least expected places. Listen up. This isn't for your average Joe. This is for the elite, the few who can actually handle a real challenge. Let's break it down with small values of n for n equals one, n to the 17 minus n equals zero. Everything divides zero, so that's a dead end. But don't lose heart, let's try n equals two. Here's where the genius kicks in. With some slick algebra, we find that it is equal to two times two to the 16 minus one, which in return is equal to two times two raised to the power of eight minus one times two raised to the power of eight plus one. That's called a remarkable identity, as remarkable as my laser-focused mind. Break the equality down with some Aikido, and you'll find it's equal to two times three times five times 17 times 257. Pay attention, this is crucial. The greatest common divisor we're after will have these prime factors at most. Now let's talk modulos. Modulo two is about checking if our integer is odd or even. Since both terms n raised to the power 17 and n are either odd or even at the same time, it means that two divides n to the 17 minus n. What about three? Time to use Fermat's little theorem again. n to the three is congruent to n modulo three. Simplifying n to the 17 modulo three yields n to the three, the all raised to the five times n squared. With some mental Aikido, we show that n to the 17 is congruent to n modulo three, meaning three divides it. Want to try some Aikido yourself? Go ahead, pause the video and apply the same logic to five. Turns out in the same way as three divides n to the 17 minus n, five divides it two. And what about 17? It's a prime, so Fermat's little theorem applies directly. No tricks needed here. So 17 divides it as well. We've handled the small primes, but what about 257? This problem is for those who dare to push their limits. Let's dig deeper. You can't just raise n to 257 and expect an easy answer. If 257 is a factor of our greatest common divisor, it should also divide three raised to the power of 17 minus three. Let's check it out. Start small and build up. According to our calculations, three to the 16 is congruent to 256 modulo 257. So three to the 17 doesn't match up with 257. Therefore, 257 doesn't divide n to the 17 minus n because it does not do so for n equals three. In the end, our greatest common divisor is the product of the numbers we boxed in green, which is 510. I hope you found this problem as exhilarating as I did. Okay, listen up. To sharpen your brain even further, you have to challenge it with some serious math problems. If you're hungry for more, here's another challenge for you. Compute the greatest common divisor of 2002 plus two, 2002 to the two plus two, 2002 to the three plus two, etc. I'll reveal the solution in the next video. Hit like, smash subscribe, and stay sharp.